bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Tris and this is Double O'Neill. If you haven't seen my channel before, I like to work on my model railway um, and I like to share it with you. I've been doing it in my loft since December now, so we're on our eighth month that I've been doing this and I've been sharing the whole journey along the way, so check out my previous videos if you haven't seen them already. What are we going to be doing on this video? Well, one thing that if you've been following me already, you'll see that I've been doing a lot of 3D printing to build my layout. And recently I acquired from a friend to borrow a Ender 3 um, FDM printer, which kind of squirts out the material to get you to the heights and layers that you want to create your shape. But you would have seen previously, I've been using a resin 3D printer, which I purchased at the beginning of lockdown, let's say. And so for this episode, we're going to be doing a couple of parts on that, painting bits up, having some fun, and yeah, we'll go from there. And I'll just show them to you as we go. I've got them right in front of me here. Looking forward to showing them to you. The first thing that I made, kind of knocking into the uh, microphone here, getting used to having this here. I've got a different microphone. I've got a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's a... <laughs> It's by Rode, just double checking. It's Procaster, and I got myself a little amp to go with it, and we'll see how that goes. I've used it for the past couple of episodes, and I'm getting used to it. I had my USB mic before, and that was working alright for me, but I fancied treating myself to something a bit more, let's say, snazzy, and um, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so into the fun stuff. So, one thing that I really want to do is have a it's got a coding stage for the 009 layout. So the mountain railway, the engine gets up there, needs a bit more coal. This is the place to go. So I had a look on Google and I saw lots of different examples. And you go through that process of um, seeing lots, you don't know which one to do. And I found something that looked like I could make it a bit smaller and squeezing because loads of traditional looking ones. And so I went for this in the end. Uh, this really um, fitted what I wanted to um, go for. So I had the concrete base, I'll kind of hide behind it. We can have that here. So we've got the concrete legs and everything. Um, there's, there's three sets of them and then there's some struts that kind of support it, some kind of form of bracing. Um, and then we've got steps with corrugated steel sides, um, which worked out quite nicely. Um, and then a, a wooden top, which I kind of imagine is like lots of sleepers put together to achieve it. Uh, and that went really, really nicely. I drew it up, I printed it off, then I felt it looked a bit big because I kind of put it next to some engines. I wasn't really sure what I was thinking at the time. I was looking and thinking, oh, I've gone oversized. So I printed another one off, which is smaller. So this is still in the 3D printed resin. So I put these both up here. They're not in focus, but they will be. Once there we go. And you can see the difference there. And that's the beauty of some of the 3D printing software where you do the slicing. You can just scale up. So if I want to make an O gauge one of these, I can just scale up and have some fun with it. Whether or not it will fit in my printer, that's another question. But we can have a look at that one day because I really fancy doing some O gauge stuff. I've got a piece of track right above me that looks at me all the time. And I really fancy making some wagons, make an engine, have some fun with that but that's for another day. I've got plenty of other stuff going on. I didn't do my last video um, last week. I normally do something every Sunday and I wasn't able to do anything for this Sunday. And there's a chance I won't be able to do anything for next Sunday. Um, the reason being work's getting busier and busier. Now we're coming out of all the lockdown bits. Um, it means I just don't have the time to, let's say, put as much on. So I've been doing a little bit each day to put together a nice video um, with maybe a little bit more quality to it because I've managed to do a bit more. Um, so, and it needs to remain fun. It's the number one rule that everyone keeps talking about. It must be fun. So instead of trying to squeeze out a video and being stressed about getting it to you, I'm doing that. But anyway, just one thing I want to talk about with this, I just thought, as we were there, we'll talk about the painting part of it. Very, very simply done. I primed it up with some Halfords Grey um, and then went through the process of painting my colours. And I used, um, it was Burnt Umber, or I believe it was Burnt Umber. One second. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got a box of my different things here. So, 
War Amber. And we used uh, burnt amber, not burnt amber. <laughs> On this, we used some of the Hobbycraft raw amber. I quite like this colour. It's a bit of a kind of a more greyish brown um, and it pulls it back but once you've painted it on um, it kind of starts coming out it's still pretty dark I'm pretty happy with how dark it came out when I was painting it I then introduced bits of um, burnt umber at the same time in areas and then I did a little black wash on it so I got some uh, just some black acrylic I then watered it down a lot to create a wash and I just used that to cut into all the what would be the grainy parts of everything to then really highlight we have the sleepers here let me get you into focus you can see all the the gaps and the joins and it looks kind of cool as well as on the um, concrete legs all I did was I painted them gray uh, and then introduced a little bit of uh, beige to that grey when I did it to offer that concrete kind of look and then again I did the black wash on top of that and that made it look all right silver for the corrugated steel on the sides on top I just had um pieces of um well just the wood more sleepers but with the I don't know why I just fancied giving some corrugated steel on the side why not it's uh, all, all fun isn't it so with that being done would I change anything again yeah there'll probably be a couple of little bits and bobs that I'd change I change probably get rid of my corrugated steel and work out something nicer with the steps but that's fine um, after that is I didn't put any um, matching well on the back you'll see let me get that in focus um, if you can see I've got where the pieces of wood obviously would have been laid on another one laid on then there's another one on the outside I'd put the the markings but on the inside I didn't mirror it across when I was drawing it so I'd probably do that next time and just gonna give things more definition one thing I don't have for it is coal I, I need to pick up an, a piece when I go to a one of the heritage railways and you see an old piece of probably not more ash than anything but there's little bits kicking around on the floor and I normally grab a little nugget and it means a bit more when I then put it on my layout because I got it from whichever place that I saw it kicking around so that's that hopefully they don't mind when you when you pick up a bit of the this is like picking up a stone off the ground I guess hopefully I don't get into any trouble anyway so with that done really really pleased with the coaling stage um I need to get more things to go with it start making it look the part but that'll be down by the engine shed the next thing that I really wanted to do was get the platform done and all I did was I picked my area I got an old um, crunchy nut cornflakes um, piece of card and I laid that on top I started trimming out to get to the point that I have my template which after that went out into the garage with a piece of uh, I think it's about four millimeter thick ply whatever that thickness is around then I didn't actually check the thickness but it's around like four mil um, drew around it and then I got my coping saw started um, cutting it as you would and got to the point that I had my piece I then got on the uh, the bench sander it's got a disc on it and just started cleaning up the end so I have my tapers at the end um, and then cleaning up the outside edge make it really really nice and then I went through the process and I haven't recorded this um, but I, I'd primer it uh, a few times I ended up using a plastic primer because it builds up a thicker layer and it starts smoothing things out and you don't see the grain of the wood which is really handy because you really showed up to begin with and then I rubbed it down and then I painted it again rubbed it down and then yeah primed it again and once that was done again I used some of my hobbycraft gray paints to just do the platform color and I thought that would be absolutely fine and then once that's done just glued it in place with um some glue I used my Gorilla Glue put that there put some weights on top of it because it was slightly deformed as well as I wanted to hold it down it kind of warped in the garage just a bit of wood that had been sitting there for a while so that was really great once I got that on there because it's been on my mind like I really want to do a platform for that and it also leads me down the route of if I do the same kind of thing at the bottom of the layout where we have at the beginning of the mountain so that's cool the one thing that I wanted to talk about was when I discussed what I would call the mountain railway, I thought I'd call it no good. So I went through the process of making a nice little sign here. 
which is, whoop, let's get that in focus, it's always tricky. No good, so that will be going on the um, platform. That, again, that was 3D printed, I've got my resin 3D printer. Um, I used my old files that I'd used for the elsewhere sign. You start kind of putting things down, it's all parametric, so what that means is that you can put all your bits and bobs together and you do an adjustment and it all snaps to that shape and then you can just go with that, change the text and so you don't have to draw everything again from scratch and have to manually move things, it just pops to where you want it to but that's if you've constrained it correctly when you draw it but it's something that I've always enjoyed doing and um, yeah, there's benefits there so it's quick to do so painted that up at the same time as doing the sign which will obviously tell us which way to go so there's this sign, which you would have seen at the beginning of the video, which is up to no good, which I think is, uh, I, I think it's funny. Um, it's, <laughs> I'm going to put that down at the bottom of the mountain and that will be fantastic. So what I want to do also is call the station at the bottom. It's going to be nowhere. Um, I think it's going to be nowhere. Yeah, we'll go with something like that. Um, so then when you leave elsewhere, you could have a sign that's saying off to nowhere or going nowhere. Yeah, going nowhere, we'll go with that. Um, I don't know, I like having fun with these things. It's all fictional anyway, what we're doing. It's all good fun. But again, doing this sign, it was the same kind of thing. We alter a couple of dimensions, change the text, even added a nice little arrow. Again, we'll just kind of get that in focus there. Um, and... Off we go. I, I painted the it up in um, Great Western Railway colours. I kind of like those colours, so I like to go with that. Um, I do have a theme of Great Western on the layout, so I'll go with that. But I've got some other locos that I'm introducing. There's diesels and various things that are coming on. And that, for me, is it's enjoyable. It's one of the nice parts of the hobby is I like following a certain theme, but I'm not constrained to it. I can still have some fun. I, I want to have some Thomas the Tank Engine logos going on. I don't know if I'll probably lose about a thousand subscribers when I do it, but I kind of like it. I always did when I was little, and when I got older and back into the hobby, I paid attention to some of that that was going on because I enjoy the history of it, as well as I was a, you know, like a baby when I first started watching it. I'm, I'm in my 30s now, and it came out, you know, around the time of when I was born, so I grew up with it, it's ingrained in my system. So I'm looking forward to maybe getting some of the Backman models that are out there with the moving eyes. My nephews have got them, they look brilliant when they're going around, so I'm looking forward to just getting a couple. But anyway, so you've seen that, you see me painting them. Um, in regards to the painting, use the Rail Match um, paints if you're wondering if you want to do any great western colours. Um, this is black and white for the centres of it, um, and then the outside, the, the, the legs, the obviously that hold it up the supports um, they are just the dark stone by rail match and yeah I did two coats of them I thin it down with a bit of um, white spirit and it's absolutely fine um, I use acrylics for the black and white but I, I plan to get some I need to get some humble paints or, or whatever of the enamel colors because when you try and paint um, the acrylic over the top of enamel it's like painting on top of just like PTFE, it doesn't stick on, It's um, you have to put a thick layer of acrylic on. So I need to get a few more paints, but we'll get there. So it's the next trip to Hobbycraft, whenever that might be, I'll pick up some other pots. So the other fun thing um, that I've been doing is I've got myself another Loco. And this is, it's Nelly or Connie, one of the other two. I understand they did both in blue, but more commonly Nelly. And this little engine is a trying um, engine. It was from 1960s that it came out, apparently, the launch was. So this engine's very old. It's it's always a pleasure to, to take hold of these engines. Uh, it's in good condition, actually. The body itself has been battered around a little bit. Um, there's a couple of edges on it. It's like it's been held a lot. All the um, bits have been rubbed off the side, so I'd like to get a new body for it sometime. Um, but it's nice to collect these items. Um, the part number... I understand, I can't see it on here, but I understand it's um, R355. Um, it's an 040, and it's got a massive motor inside it, and it gets around the track all right. Again, the wheels kind of bounce over the um, points that are on the layout, just like my other training model. That's because of the flanges, and what I will do if I ever get around to it is I'll take those flanges down this bit on the lathe when I get them apart, but I also don't want to ruin it. I kind of feel bad about it so I'm quite happy if it bounces over a little bit um, I'm not going to run them all the time it's more for the, the fun of it let's say 
Um, but no, it was a pleasure to get. And there's a load of old Triang and Hornby 00 engines that I've seen, various ones. Because uh, my father has a book of like um, Triang and Hornby 00. And it's got all these old engines in there um, with the history on there. And there's certain ones that I used to look at when I was younger that I always wanted. So I look out for them now. And if I see them for a good price, I'd like to get them. Just because there's something about them that from your childhood, it, it stirs up inside you and you want to get it. So that's that. So um, you'll be seeing Nelly going out around um, on the layout, uh, pulling away quite nicely and very, very pleasing to do. And I'm sure I'm going to add to the range of triangle double O locos that I'll be getting over time. So anyway, so that's that. I, I want to say um, thank you so much for all the support, the comments. I always say this episode, episode, but some of the comments that I get, I get some direct messages from people um, and really really nice um comments some of them are telling me their stories getting back into it um some of you like you're in your 50s and your i guess your kids have moved out and you're thinking i want to get back into what i liked when i was younger and um it's i've been sent pictures of people's layouts and it's nice to hear stories i do apologize if i haven't emailed you back yet or got back in touch Work's been really, really busy, and when I want to reply to you, I want to dedicate some proper time to it, so I'll give you a decent answer, opposed to, this is the best I can do with my next two minutes that I have free. So I like to give you a proper response, so please be patient with me. Um, the last bit is to say massive thank you to my patrons. I'm up to five now, which is really cool. Um, and I'm going to that money that I get from that, I want to just invest into this channel and keep sharing what I enjoy. So what I'm going to try and do is just give you what I've been doing, do the best job that I can. I'm not going to try and just crank out a video every week. I'll do what I can with the time that I've got. And if it's not enough to do what I believe is a nice episode for you to all enjoy, I'll wait another week until I've done a bit more on the layouts and I can share it. Uh, I've got lots of other little things going on in the background for the layout that I'm looking forward to doing and showing you soon. Um, I just need to get the time to do it. Anyway, thank you so much for everything, um, all the support, like I said before. I'm up to 3,000 subscribers. It's been absolutely brilliant um, getting to this point, and I've had a lot of fun along the way. Um, it's because lockdown happened, I had a lot of weekends free. I was able to dedicate a lot of time to it, and I've really enjoyed it. And I look forward to getting up into the loft and working on things. We're even just working on the locos um, down here in my room here. So anyway, I've talked a lot. I hope you're all alright. You're taking care of yourselves. Um, like railways are opening up and stuff like that. We can go see them soon. I hope you're enjoying doing all that. I'll see you soon. See you on the next episode. Take care. Bye. <laughs>